just to worship. Um, we're sitting there talking about totally in agreement. Um, there, there are manifestations of healings and things that are taking place in this room right now. There are breakthroughs going on outside these walls that you've been believing for, but because of your position this morning to worship the Lord and to, to stand in the middle of, of this and to, to stir yourselves up, to do things that you haven't done. You know, you know, that, that's different for everybody. I'm, I'm, a, I'm out there, y'all know me, I'd run around, I'd, whatever. But there's a development in your relationship with the Lord and, and as you continue to grow in that. But I believe some of the things that took place in this room tonight didn't necessarily, they were, some of the things outside the, these walls that you've been believing for were broken because of the, what you were doing in here as we were worshiping the Lord, amen? So some of your kids are, are turning back around and coming back where they need to come to. Uh, some of your breakthroughs financially, you're gonna, you're gonna see the manifestations of them this week. And so I'm gonna encourage you, if you were healed this morning, if you're watching by way of internet, if there was something that happened to you, please email us. Let us know what's taking place or call up here at the office. Give us some insight into the manifestations of the glory of God in your life this week, amen? You excited about that? That's awesome. I want to I want to go back to this scripture I read a few minutes ago, and just when Cassie was singing that about dreams, he says, "When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed." It's time to turn your dreamer back on. Come on. Some of you have seen God do some great things in your life. Let's see Him do some greater things. He wants to. He's greater. He's the greater one, amen? The greater one lives on the inside of you. So, so expectation, dream, 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 and expect those dreams to come to pass, amen? And laugh, you need to practice laughing, amen? You need to practice laughing to where it just comes supernaturally. You'll be in a circumstance and just kind of giggle a little bit. Some, you may hear something going on and just kind of giggle a little bit. You may be at work and everybody else talking about this, this, and that, and everything else. You may turn on the fake news and something's saying, he said about something else, and you just kind of laugh at it, amen? <laughs> Seriously, stir yourselves up for that as concern. Quit let the devil beat you around, amen? Well, turn around and smile at somebody real big, tell them I love, love you, and it's good to be with you in the house of the Lord today, amen? Amen. Y'all can be seated if you'd like. Isn't God good? Amen. I like that song by Minister. If you ever, anybody like rap in here, I like rap music. And, I, and so uh, there's, a, there's a minister by the name of, and he's a rapper, and his name's Minister. And so I saw, he's, he goes to the Believers Convention, our youth know him, but he's got a song that, that's, uh, and it says, laugh at the devil out loud, ha ha. The song is actually called ha ha, okay? And so, uh, but you have to learn how to laugh at the devil out loud, amen? Because he, he, he wants to make things look like they're going crazy in your life and like you're never going to accomplish. I did a series uh, about a year and a half ago with our youth, and I, I don't know if you ever watched Gulliver's Travel, you older people in here, but growing up. So uh, he would he had this little pest, pesty guy, kind of like um, Eeyore, you know, just constantly the negative coming out. Leave it alone, Gulliver, you'll never make it. You know, that's the devil. And I tell the students, you know, you got to recognize when anything says I can't. That's a four-letter word in my house. When my kids were little, they knew they got a pow-pow or they got disciplined if we're saying the word can't, all right? So I had a really smart youngster, so she would say, I'm not able to do that right now, Dan. And so, and you know, you learned, you know, but the reality of it is the devil's the one that tells you you can't do this and you can't do that. And, you know, God's constantly wanted to help us keep our dreamer on. Amen. He created us with the ability to create, and that takes dreaming. Amen. 
Uh, and that's what he did with Abraham when he set Abraham out. He said, look up at the stars and, and, and the sand, and you won't be able to number your descendants. What was he? He was giving him a vision. He was giving him a dream. And you and I have got to continue. There's a dream thief out here, too. So there's two books. There's, th- there's two books on specifically joy out in that, lo- in, that, in that bookstore. If Satan can't steal your joy, he can't steal your goods, and he can't steal your dreams. Those two books, dreams and goods. I'm telling you, there's things that the devil's been stealing from you that you got to take back. Well, I went, remember that old song, well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. You know, the devil's been stealing from me for a long time. He's a thief, right? And so you need to make sure that you're taking back what he's stealing from you. Amen? And also, the other one is if Satan can't steal your joy. Because see, here's the reality of it. Satan's like, why are you laughing at? It's the same thing he did with Brother Hagin. What are you laughing at? I'm, I'm wrecking your life. No, I'm, you're not wrecking my life. You cannot wreck my life. Come on. I, I'm, I am more than a conqueror because my Jesus has already conquered and I have the victory that overcometh the world, even my faith. So I'm going to stand in my faith in what God's doing for me rather than what you think you're doing. Amen. Come on. I, I love what brother, uh, Dr. Chevelle, one time, I believe it was, he, he took this, this, this testimony of him. He was going through some things. He was building, believing for some of the buildings here and going through some. And he went to Or Roberts University and he went and he uh, got a hotel room across the street from the university with the top, top, top window so that he could see the whole entire university so that he could. And he pulled up a chair and made the devil sit there with him and said, look, see that university over there? And we got to tell him if faith works for him and faith works for me. Amen. Come on now. You and I have got to lay hold. There's a fight going on, and the dog you feed is the, the one that wins. Come on. You got to get your bark on. Amen? Amen. You know, do what you have to do. You want to win? You got to get some, you got to get some gumption about you, man. Really. There's a real devil out there. He's like a ro- he's not a roaring lion. He's like a roaring lion seeking about whom he may devour. What, is the, what do they go for? They always go for the weak link. So stop being isolated by yourself. Come on. Stay connected to the body of Christ. Stay around people that are going to stir you up and challenge you and encourage you to be who you were created to be. Stop listening to all the mully grubs, the Eeyores and the Gulliver little dude that you don't want to be around. You want to be around people that are going to talk faith with you, believe with you, that are going to stand in the middle of things with you, not talk doubt and unbelief. They're going to talk the word of God with you, and they're going to encourage you where that word is concerned. So you come into church. So if you're at a different church and you're getting beat down every time you go, stop. Okay? Seriously. In here, we're going to continuously talk and motivate you to understand God's created you to win, not lose. Amen? Amen. Amen. We say this with you. I'm a winner, not a wiener. Okay? you got to understand, I'm a winner. You're a winner. You're a winner going somewhere to happen. Amen? You're the person that God's chosen. You're a chosen generation. You're the one that God chose to be on his team because he believes with you he can win. Amen? Hallelujah. And so you and I have got to keep ourselves stirred up with that as concerned because sometimes you just don't feel like it, right? right? Come on. Sometimes in all of our lives where you just feel like, oh, another thing. No, stop. Man, another opportunity. Another opportunity to have a testimony because the test just showed up. Amen? And you get to testify about what God just did in your life. Just like he did. It, he's going to do it again. You just got to keep your faith. Light, keep the light switch of faith turned on. Part of that is your joy. Amen? So let's look at a few scriptures this morning. Go to 1 Peter 1, 8. Amen. Come on. Praise God for the word. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Justin has been diving, helping us dive into the word. You know, because heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will what? Never pass away. You just can't take my word for it. You just can't take Pastor Justin's word for it. You need to take God's word for it. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. So when you see it in the written word of God, you can say, just like Jesus said, when Satan came to tip him, it is written. Come on. It is written. All right. So here we are in 1 Peter 1, 8. If you're there, say amen. Amen. He says here, whom having not seen, you love, and whom though now you see him not, Yet, believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of what? Glory. Glory. Glory to God. 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 
Put a smile on your face. Glory to God. Another opportunity comes. Glory to God. It's another opportunity for you to have a victory. Right, Tommy? Yeah. Glory to God. With joy unspeakable. Oh, my goodness. You can't even talk about That's when the laughter comes in. Amen? <laughs> there are times, my wife knows, there are times, there's moments the Lord has spoken specifically, specific words to me. When I see something, that I need to laugh at it. <laughs> and she'll laugh because I laughed because she knows what I'm laughing at. Come on now. There's some, you ever, there's some things in life, and I love Brother Moore, he says this, that just ought not be. Right? Come on. Especially in the Christian world, you just look at things and you go, that just ought not be. Right? So that's a good opportunity to go, ha, 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 because that should not be like that. Right? Okay? But if you pay attention to it, it's going to stay like that. Ha, 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 ha. What? <laughs> you and I are going to keep our laughter alive in order for us to stay alive. Come on. That's, that's what jo part of joy is laughter. So have a good time. Laugh. Come on. Laugh. Laugh at your circumstances that you're facing right now. Ha ha. Find some way, somehow to just stir that laughter up. It's, all, it's in there. Believe you. Believe me. It's in there. Ha 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 ha. He 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 he. And you can do that. Ho 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 ho. Ha ha. He he. Ho ho. Ha ha. He he. Y'all practice. Ho ho. Ha ha. He he. Ho ho. Ha ha. He he. Ho 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 Yeah. Ha 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 I believe with all my heart there were times when Brother Hagen did not feel like, and he'd have to just make himself do something like that. Ha 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 ha. Come on. I'll, come on, <laughs> you're gonna, you practice this. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And the less you stop paying attention to the negative stuff that's going on in your life. And you know what else? The less you'll start seeing that negative stuff take place in your life. Come on, you and I, that's our job. It's, it's to overcome the situation. And we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And part of that joy unspeakable is the laughter that's coming out. Of you. The, the realization is this. Jesus, uh, go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Great scripture here. <laughs> Come on, you laugh. Ha, ha, ha. He, he, he. Ho, ho. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. Okay. <laughs> so in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Now, here's a reality. In that message that Brother Hagin's ministering, he, he takes 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and he talks about having how the, how the children of Israel were facing a, a situation where they were against five kings, and there's no way that they could actually win the battle in the natural, but they ended up uh, praising the Lord in their circumstances. Hello. Come on. Worship is sending out the worshipers and, and getting the song going on and singing a song. Come on. Just keep singing. Keep, come on. You just, there's times you need to have a, a, a <laughs> you got to have a, 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 a hop in your step, hello, a laughter, a smile, and just keep going. Don't let it move you. You just keep going. Steady Eddie is the one that wins the race. Amen. So you just stay in the middle of it. You just keep laughing at the devil out loud. Ha ha. He he ho ho. And the reality of that gathering up the spoils, all they did, they didn't do one thing. They didn't do one thing except praise the Lord in the midst of their circumstance. Because that's what God told them to do. When you know you've already been promised a victory over the situation. Brother Copeland's salvation came because Miss Vanita finally decided to stop. Trying to make it happen and just, you know what, God, that's your, that's your work, not my work. There's some things you need to roll the care of your situation over on the Lord because he cares for you. Come on. All right, so in the process, just laugh because you've already got the victory that overcometh the world. Amen? If you're going through a test, you know you're going to win, so why worry about it? Right? I just, ha, ha, hee, 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 woo. Yes. If God didn't think I could pass it, he wouldn't allow me to go through it. So I'm just, woo, yeah, you can get up there. Come on now, do what you have to do and get excited about it, amen? You just, I mean, there's a reality check that we all have to go through in our lives because the devil doesn't play fair. He hits all of us. He doesn't care who you are, Christian or not Christian. He just wants to take somebody out, amen? You and I have got to recognize that and choose to live above what he's, he's, he's fighting us with at the moment, Amen? So stay excited, all right, amen? Hallelujah. So joy unspeakable. So don't get second, I mean, Colossians chapter 2, right? Look at this. This is talking about Jesus and having spoiled principalities, 
powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I love a message that Dr. Savell preaches years ago, and he talks about uh, Evander Holyfield. And, you know, Evander Holyfield is a major, he's a world champion. So, you know, Evander Holyfield, you know, he's good friends with Dr. Savell. So, uh, anyway, he'd won the world championship. He says, you know, Evander Holyfield's a champion, but Evander Holyfield's wife is more than a conqueror. More, come on. Why? Because when he gets home, he hands a check to her. Hey, come on. Right? <laughs> Reality check right there. So this is the reality. Jesus has already came, saw, and kicked that for every one of us in this room. Jesus has already won the victory for us. He's already done it. He's done the work. It was his work. Now, all we got to do is we got to trust that he's done it and receive what he's done for us in the process of it. Woo, get excited about it. How do we receive it? We're getting excited. We're happy. We're just so excited. We're going to the show. Hey, man, a little old lady, still bro that was a lady in Brother Hagin's hometown. I'm going to the show. She used to be all dressed up. What show are you going? They thought they were going to like the matinee. She, they tell, she's one of the holiness, you know, ladies. And they go, what show are you going to? I'm going to the show. We didn't think y'all believed in going to the show. He says, no, I'm going to the show. And then she would quote the scripture right here. He made a show with them open. She was going to church all dressed up like that. Amen. We should be coming to church and it should be a show. Amen. A show of what Jesus is doing in mind in your life. There should be miracles, signs, and wonders that are taking place every time we come to church. You should be getting set free. And you should be go getting your friends so that they can get set free and delivered. Amen. I love a brother Jesse's, uh, I, we had the privilege, we've had the privilege of meeting brother Jesse's uh, uh, brother-in-law that would bring, he was a lawyer and, you know, he's told those stories, about testimonies, and you should be the same way. He would go get his people that he had actually a law case against. And he says, I can do one of two things. We can either get you healed, okay, or we can go to court on this. What would you like? <laughs> well, I want to be healed. Okay. So he take him to church and he just bring, Jesse, you got to heal him. You go, what is he doing? He actually brought somebody, he brought a cough, he went in front of him to a dead man to make, ready to raise him from the dead. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's awesome. What are you doing? What are you doing? Your friends should note that there is so much different. There, the glory of God is on your life. There's something different. You're not moved by all the circumstances that they're moved by on a regular basis, that they want to be where you are, go where you go, and see what God is doing in your life. Because there's more than meets the eye. Amen? Come on. Remember that? More than meets the eye. I remember that, right? Okay, so the reality, there's more to you than meets the eye, and it's called Jesus. And he's already conquered so that you and I could be more than conquerors. We just need to stir our faith up with that as concern. And our joy and our excitement about what God is doing in our lives is going to attract other people to come be with us at church. Amen? Amen. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Stir this up. Come on, you and I, we've got a constant. I mean, all of us have to do this. It doesn't fall off like ripe apples off a tree. Amen? You, gotta put, you and I have got to make sure that we're staying focused on faith in this area of our lives. Amen? And we've got to learn how to laugh. Laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Um, the Amplified in the 1 Peter 1, 8. Don't go there, but I'm just going to read this. Without, without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not even know, now see him, you believe in him and exult and thrill with an inexpressible and glorious, triumphant, heavenly joy. Inexpressible, glorious, triumphant, heavenly joy. That's not regular joy. That's exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask over. Think joy. Amen. Ha! You know, you, walk, you show up somewhere and everybody goes, what happened? You know? Come on. You change the atmosphere. And sometimes it's by faith. Amen. So you don't feel like it. you just go in there anyway. Hello, how y'all doing today? Good to see you today. You know, give that person a compliment that tends to be the mully grubs all the time. Just keep loving on. You'll be surprised at what kind of change you can make in their lives. Amen. Amen? Just keep on loving. Keep on loving. Keep bringing your joy to every circumstance. Amen? Go to John chapter 15, 11. Glory to God for the word. Glory to God for the word. Say praise God for the word. Ah, oh, the word. It's more than just a book, right? Yeah. What an amazing passage of scripture. Jesus is, t is teaching his disciples. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If we spend more time meditating in the word than our circumstances, then the word will be bigger than our circumstance. Yeah. Amen? And that's what he's talking about here. So you and I have got to do this in order for our joy to be where it needs to be. In, verse, in chapter 15, verse 11. He says this, 
These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Woo! To my joy. If you're having, if you're, if you're, if you're sitting on empty, get in the word. Pastor Justin is preaching this right now and pouring this word into us and the importance of the word of God. When, when it seems like everything is empty, get in the word. Yeah. Meditate in the word. Let the word of God be in your ears, be in your eyes. Keep putting it in there. I don't care how you have to do it. Make sure the word of God is filling you up. Amen. It's got to be more real to you that your joy can be what it's supposed to be. When you come to Pastor Justin or myself or one of your leaders here and you've got all this negative, oh, you can't believe what I'm going through. You're focusing more on those negative things than you are what the word of God says about who you are. And you got to change that. You and I have got to, in order for your joy to be full, you've got to change your perspective. And the way you change your perspective, you've got to change what you're looking at on a regular basis. Quit looking at the circumstances. Take your eyes off the circumstances and, take your, take, and put your eyes on the answer to the circumstances. The Word of God. If a man remains in me and I in him, he'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. What is that? Remain in the Word. I am in the Word. we got to be in the Word. we got to stay in the Word we got to meditate in the word day and night. Then we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Then we'll bear our fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control on a regular basis. Everybody looks at you like, wow, come on, where'd you come from? You know, with the word of God. I mean, I'm, I'm birthed out of the word. Of, I'm birthed out of Jesus himself. Man, you don't think that people walk, just looked at Jesus and mesmerized. Wow, that's him. That's the son of God. Even the, even the blind man knew it was Jesus and he couldn't even see. Well, come on, what, is it? what am I saying? There's such an anointing on your life that people want to be around it. They're drawn to it. Come on. It's because you're more full of who God is on the inside of you than what's going on around you. Glory to God. And it doesn't fall off again, like I said, like ripe apples off a tree. You're the one that's got to work it. You're the one that's got to stay in it. You're the one that's got to fight the good fight of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. By what? The word of God. Come on. By the word of God. So you and I have got to constantly make the word of God first place in our lives. And it will elevate our joy level. Amen. Yeah. And then when we have joy, then what happens? Manifestation. Yeah. Come on. When we are joyful about a certain, when you're not moved by your circumstances, you can move your circumstances. Woo. Come on. Woo, glory to God. I'm preaching myself happy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the Lord said this to me this morning. I was praying. He says, joy is an outward expression of an inward revelation. Joy is an outward expression of an inward revelation. I can sit up here and talk to you about this because it's not something that I'm trying to conjure up. It is something that I live by. I, I know on the inside of me, it's, it's, it's in me so easy, it comes out of me so easy. Why? Because it is in me. So what joy, it's an outward expression of an inward revelation. What's the revelation that you have to have? There is no temptation common to me that God is not. If God's put something in front of me, he has already promised me that I'm winning in this situation. I can bow up. Ah, yeah. Come on, I can get excited about it, man. You want some of this? Come on, seriously. You get excited because you know that God is giving you an opportunity to show him off. Yes. Come on. You're giving him an opportunity to say, look what the Lord has done. Come on now. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Come on, now you got this. And so you're giving him that opportunity constantly to be manifest, to manifest his glory in your life. Because it's Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's looking to pour out his glory on his children. And we've got to meditate more in him than we do in the circumstances that we're going through in order for his glory to be manifested in our lives. Amen? Woo, I'm excited. Are you excited this morning? Where did I tell y'all to go? I haven't told you anything yet, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, go to Habakkuk chapter 3. <laughs> Whew, I'm, I'm so excited this morning. I, I tell you what, I got excited about two weeks ago when I'm laying in bed and I'm trying to, I'm reading this book and I start laughing and I start laughing and I start laughing and I'm thinking I'm going to stop. No, I'm not. Couldn't laughing and something else will make me laugh because you know you've got more than one thing going on in your life you got a lot to laugh about amen <laughs> hello you know and I think everybody thinks that you know you're the pastor you don't ever go through anything anymore you've developed this great love walk and you have this come on seriously seriously or you've got you know 
You don't think Pastor Justin or Ned ever go through anything? You don't think the, the Savelles ever go? You don't think we ever go through something? My goodness. You know, we, we're no different. No, he is no, the devil is no respecter of persons. Come on. He don't care who you are. He wants to take you out. He doesn't, he's a cheap shot, man. You know, boy, you just, don't like, nobody likes a cheap shot. That's what he, he's just a cheap shot. All right? But you got to stand. And when you've done all to stand, stand there for it. Amen? Because you've already, you already know that you win. Say, I win. I win. So I want you to see here, that here's here in Habakkuk. And Habakkuk, I mean, this is the one. Come on now. Everybody talks about, you know, write the vision down, make it plain, get all excited, got your dreams going on. Come on. Seriously, here's Habakkuk. He's the one with a vision about this, all right? He's the one that's being talked to. And Habakkuk, too, everybody knows it. Everybody's someone's going, two, two. It's Habakkuk, two, two. Yeah, uh, yeah, write the vision. You, you see that. Okay, so here's Habakkuk, the big visionary dude. Come on now. Woo-hoo. Now let's read about Habakkuk. All right? Because let me tell you something. Satan's after your dreams. He's after what God's already promised you, what you've seen in the word of God that's yours. He's trying to steal it from you. He's trying to steal it from me, and you cannot let him do that. Yeah. All right, here we go. Look at this. Habakkuk <laughs> chapter 3, starting verse 17. Say, praise God for the word. This is Habakkuk. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, I'm not getting any fruit in my life. Nothing's happening. Come on, this is just reality here. Neither shall the fruit be in the vine. So there's, I can't even see something at this moment in time. Been there? Come on now. Come on, you're going through something. You're like, a little glimpse of what could happen, Lord, would be real good now. <laughs> right? Come on. You ever, <laughs> hello? Hell, am, I, am I the only one? My wife's laughing. That's, anybody else here? Hello? You're, you're believing for something and you're wanting to see the, something. Show me some, some little bitty fruit. You know when you start growing something, you keep looking at it, hoping to see that little bean start, come on out. And you're like, something come out. You know, you're like, God, just a trickle. Come on, something, Lord, show me something. This is a back of right here, okay? No different than me or you, right? It's, it's the truth, okay? All right, so he goes on. He says, um, the labor of the olive shall fail. You're supposed to be faith, Habakkuk. What's the matter? Come on. Right? This, this, those people ain't never going to show up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, that paycheck's never going to come. Hmm. That breakthrough's never going to come. My kid's never going to come back to Jesus. What? No, stop. In the name of love. Because he's love, right? Stop that. Because he loves you. He loves me. You got to be confident in the love that God has for you. Because it's the fruit of the Spirit is love, and then the next word is what? Joy. See, if you don't have a revelation of the love of God, you'll never be excited about the joy of God. You got to know God loves you. You got to. Tr- <laughs> All right. Oh. And the fields shall. Can you just hear this? The fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, come on now. Whoa, this is where it all turns right here. Because Habakkuk says, you know what? I don't give a rip about what's going on in my life right now. I don't care if I don't have anything showing right now. I don't care if my bank account's empty. I don't care if my kid looks like they're off in another world somewhere. It does not going to move me. The circumstance isn't going to make me flinch. There is no flinching in this house. Amen? Woo, glory to God. He said, yet I will rejoice. Come on now. Woo! That's when you get your joy on. Hey, hey. That, that word joy, rejoice there means to get bright. Ha ha, right? And it means to leap. Come on now. And it means to spin around. Woo! Can, can I get one person to do that for me? Hello, just one? Is that all I'm going to get? Come on now. If you want to see your circumstance turned around, you need to jump. You need to leap, you need to spin around, and you need to get bright. What are you believing for this morning? You're not going to see the manifestations of what God is doing in your life until you get excited about what he's doing in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. 
<laughs> oh, 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 breakthrough is coming your way. Say this, I'm booming. 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 Remember that last week? Dr. Savelle told you. Did you be, have y'all been, how many of y'all been saying that to yourself this, and everybody else? Oh, I have. I'm booming. I'm booming. I'm, that means you're flourishing. You're abounding. The goodness, the good things of God are flourishing. I'm booming. Just like the oil boom back in the 80s. Come on now. You're booming right now. You got so much, you got to give it away. Amen? Woo! <laughs> Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? Because the Lord God is my strength. What, now, come on now. Now, what did he say to Nehemiah? The what is your strength? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Woo, how many of y'all feel weak? No, you should not feel weak if you're in here this morning, amen? So you got so much strength, but why? Because there's so much joy in this place right now. So you need to take this joy and continue to cultivate this joy. Hello? So that you can be strong in the Lord and the power of his might over your circumstances you're facing right now in your life. Woo! I choose joy. I choose joy. That was a Larnell Harris. How many of y'all remember Larnell? Larnell could sing, man. That man had some pipes on him. He, but he, he recognized choice. Choose. Choose this day. See, it's every single day of our lives. I got to wake up with a choice in my mind that I'm going to choose this day who I'm going to serve. I'm not going to serve my circumstances. I'm not going to be weighed down by the situation that's going on. I'm going to choose to walk in the victory that overcometh the world. My faith in the blood of Jesus and what he's already conquered for me on the face of this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instrument. Hello, you're going to start singing a song you didn't even know you had anymore. Hallelujah. You'll start singing a song that God placed in your heart because he's put a song in your heart. He's put a song in every one of our hearts. My, my, uh, my granddaddy could whistle and play the harmonica. Ooh, I could just listen to him. I could, this past week I was listening to an old song. I just thought, I cannot wait to be back in, or be with him in heaven and hear him play that harmonica. Ooh, glory to God. But you know what? You got a song in your heart. You got a song that's, that God's placed on the inside of you. And you need to sing that song that's on there. You need to whistle it. You need to do whatever you need to do in your own personal time, not just when we show up here on Sundays. I went back, my, I told my wife, she woke up to me on, I think it was a couple, few days ago. I said, I went old school. I got me a whole new old school playlist. Come on now. I did, man. I went back and pulled out some old stuff, man. I just need to hear some of that stuff. Amen? Yeah. Stuff that had faith to it. So there's so much songs right now that people sing and you're just thinking, where'd they get that from? Because this show wasn't from the Bible. Amen? Come on. And you and I need to keep our light switch turned on, right? And that's the light switch of faith. And when we have faith going into our hearts, then we're able to have the joy that God intended for us to walk in because we know how much he loves us. Amen? Man, when you have that joy, there's so much peace in your life. You just walk through life like nothing's happening. No big deal. And people say, why you got it all going on? It's because of Jesus. Amen? I meditate more in Jesus than I do in the circumstances that's going on in my life. Amen? You and I have got to constantly do that. Amen? Did you receive something this morning? Yeah. Amen. I want to transition here. I'm going to actually let my wife, she doesn't even know this. Isn't that wonderful? That's how you tag team really good. Oh, I did have one other thing. I want to read something. That'll give her a second. Oh, she's going to come up here and read a scripture before we receive the tithes and offerings. Because we're going to receive, if you're, getting, if you're giving this morning, prepare your giving right now. To expect to receive. But I want you to see something. She's, and she and I were talking about this, something in, the, uh, in 2 Corinthians when he's talking about your giving and what joy is involved in your giving, in the process of your giving. Because you, 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 when you understand your covenant with God Almighty, it's so easy for you to give joyfully. Yeah. Amen? And it's a joyful giver that gets the response that, God, that you're wanting in the circumstance. So if you're giving this morning, make sure you do it with joy this morning. Amen? Make sure you do it with joy. Pastor Cassidy is going to come back up here in a minute. But I want to read uh, uh, something else from Dr. S Dr. Savelle's book. Again, this book is in the bookstore. If we run out for any reason, we have plenty over at JSMI. We will not run out, okay? We'll get you what you need from that standpoint, all right? I know we got a dozen in there this morning. Uh, there's also, if Satan can't steal your joy, he can't steal your dreams. And there's another book, if Satan can't steal your joy, he can't steal your goods. Okay, so you need to get joy manifesting in your life. And when you have joy manifesting in your life, you're going to see the manifestations of what you're believing for in your life. Amen? 
Look at this. In a, this is on page 92 of his, his, his new book. Even the heathen will recognize the... Look at this. This is the world. Even the heathen will recognize the goodness of God in the lives of those who rejoice. <laughs> right there. Makes me want to, Woo! Ha ha! Hey! What's going on today? Amen? You're just rejoicing the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. Come on. For the Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. Psalms 126, I read that earlier to you. We've learned, this is Dr. Chevelle, we've learned that the real Bible joy is not merely an emotion. Come on. It's not. I'm telling you, the moment you start laughing at your circumstances, you know, you might naturally at first feel like, oh, this isn't, this is stupid. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> you're, you're laughing. Because <laughs> I mean, there's times where I'm going, really, Lord? Ha, ha, ha. He, I'm, just, I'm just being real <laughs> transparent with you. There are times where you're just going to have to, ha, 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 
Amen? Amen. Don't hesitate to get this book. Keep yourself stirred up. Meditate on the scriptures we talked about. Pastor Cassie, you want to come on up?